Greetings! Welcome to my channel where I share my science careers, job hunt experiences, deliver presentations on pharma, documentation, quality, microbiology, and finally improve my communication skills while simultaneously helping you out. I'm Paul Yatesman, a Bachelor of Science graduate with over 15 years experience in the pharmaceutical industry related to microbiology, quality control and quality assurance. I'm seeking a return to the lab and hopefully this does it. As well as here I can be found on LinkedIn, Twitter and my microbiology blog so be sure to check those out. If you are a subscriber, hey welcome back. Today I would like to discuss Welcome to today's topic of what to wear at an interview. For a laboratory quality or related role, what do you do? Do you dress up or do you dress down? Should you dress in boardies in a t-shirt or should you dress in a suit? For any interview for a role in a laboratory, I recommend a suit, a shirt and a tie. The standard colours for a suit are charcoal grey or dark blue, that's what they all tell you on the internet. Uh, I would say here the important thing is that it fits and as long as the suit isn't too gaudy it doesn't really matter what you wear. Wearing a suit shows that you have made an effort. A suit that fits subconsciously conveys that you are competent as long as you wear it confidently. So I'll touch on more of that in my next video which I'm going to deliver. Your tie colour could be anything and there is an entire school of thought on the psychology of tie colour so I encourage you to jump on Google or your search engine of choice and check that out. If I was personally interviewing you for a role I wouldn't care about what colour tie you wore. I possibly would knock points off if you wore a novelty tie. Maybe not, depends how um, heinous the example was. Uh, for example the very first uh, job I ever got I wore a um, Marvin the Martian tie and I got the job so it I guess it doesn't count against you in the big grand scheme of things. For a senior role I might pay more attention so that perhaps if you wore a red tie signifying like you were the alpha male maybe you'd get more points for that but really as long as you've got a tie that fits your image then who cares what colour it is. Okay, let me show you an example of my ties which I have and I'll explain like my favourite ones and which ones I would probably wear for an interview versus ones I wouldn't bother with. Okay, so here is my main tie collection. These are the ones I like and the ones that I tend to wear more than there's what over in the corner, about five or so that I don't tend to wear just because they're like lower quality and I don't like the colours so I'll be pop shopping those at some point. Uh, the main ones I would consider for a job interview would be the first three columns on the left. So you'll see that's either a red tie or variant or a blue tie. What colour shirt should you wear and should it have French cuffs? Uh, white or light blue is the go for your shirt. Uh, the cuff fasteners are for you to choose. Uh, for example here I have a non white or blue shirt and I've got cufflinks. I happen to like cufflinks so I'll tend to wear those in shirts. And speaking more of suit choice, the recommendation is for plain colours. Uh, pinstripes are fine if they're subtle. I've got a whole bunch of suits which have subtle pinstripes, nothing gangster style or anything. Just like mild pinstriping either with specific white lines or maybe a change in texture. I'll uh, give you a quick rundown of my suits now. Okay, here we have a plain grey blue jacket and pants run underneath it. You can see there's a pocket square already there, so if I was going to pick this up for a job interview, I would wear it with a blue tie. But what I would do is set everything out the day before an interview, just so you have your clothing set to go. And ideally, I'd also have a backup suit and tie and shirt laid out for the interview just in case something got splashed on the suit or it had a hole in it or something was wrong with it when you actually put it on. So that's a risk assessment which 
is great. Okay, here I have the classic charcoal suit. It fits well. It has a red pocket square in there, so perhaps I would lay out a red tie with this or replace a pocket square with something else. Rightio, here I have the first example of a mild pinstripe suit. It's labelled as a Marnie, but it's probably a knockoff, but it fits well and it looks good, so therefore I would consider that for an interview. For my second pinstripe suit, uh, it's got an even subtler stripe on it, and as for my previous three suits, it fits well and it looks good, so that would be another interview choice. So basically what you see is suits that are relatively plain and fit well are suitable interview choices. Uh, one suit I wouldn't choose would be, say, this one because it's more of a casual suit and uh, houndstooth brown isn't what you would consider standard business attire these days. So what you want to do for an interview is to wear what is generally accepted to be like standard business attire. Uh, for an interview that is important because it shows that you basically know what is expected so therefore you do that. So basically what you wear needs to fit well and look good because the interviewer isn't going to consciously care about what you look like unless your clothes are real fitting dirty or dilapidated. So getting back to one of my first points, you've got to make it look like you've made an effort. And if you do look like you've made an effort, then most likely you have. So that shows that you're willing to put in the time to actually get a result. Your shoes, they should be clean, polished and in good nick. Oxfords if you can afford them, otherwise derbies, brogues or plain will be fine. Uh, as long as you don't roll up wearing sneakers, that's good. In these days of uh, video interviews, ideally dress up as well. So don't wear, say, no pants. You want to still dress up because then that gives you mentally the feel that you're actually there for the interview. Recently, I sourced all of my suits, which is about 10 of them, from opportunity shops for between seven and $25 each. And I made sure I got ones that fit and I only went with wool or silk. So no polyester and preferably no mass produced suits. So we're looking around, you can, you can get quite a lot of good suits which are either been tailor made for someone specifically and they don't need them anymore for whatever reason or like quite nice ones from Europe or London, places like that, if you want to act like you're snobby <laughs> or just uh, look good because most of the, the good good quality suits tend to actually look better as well. And ideally get something that's uh, made in the last 10 years and isn't technically fashionable but is classic. The same goes for most of my shirts. Uh, they're all cotton, uh, all but one of my ties I got from op shops, uh, they're all silk, you can generally pick up silk ties for three to six dollars, uh, sometimes you'll get home and you'll look up the brand of your tie and go, whoa, how can they be charging 300 bucks for that tie, but it's like charging it for some really good purchases, and actually the couple of my, I guess my expensive cheap ties are actually quite nice. So when you acquire your suits, I encourage you to wear them on a daily basis because that allows you to become comfortable wearing the suit. I started wearing suits daily to work about a year ago, felt overdressed at the start, but now I'm quite comfortable wearing suits. Uh, and when you are comfortable wearing your clothing, that helps you come across as confident in an interview and just in your general dealings. So if you can get used to wearing the clothing that you wear and be comfortable with it, yay. So in summary, impressions count. That is why at an interview, it is important to wear a suit that fits, a tie, a business shirt and clean shoes, and make sure nothing's ratty. None of this will help if you look and smell like a hobo, so also make sure you wash and groom before going to an interview. Studies show that within the first six to seven seconds of an interview, the impression that someone gets about you is what they keep throughout like their dealings with you. Uh, so that means that like, <laughs> if you fail in those first seconds of an interview, it's over, it doesn't matter what you say. Which is crazy, but that's how psychology works apparently. In my next video, I will discuss conflicting cover letter advice.
Thanks for watching. If you have found this video informative or interesting, please subscribe, like and share. The more the merrier. Got something to say? Perhaps a suggestion on a future video topic? Leave that in the comments. Until next time, this has been Paul Yateman, a scientist seeking career satisfaction. Kapla!